Good morning, everybody. UFC 299 fight day. It is fight morning. Cheers to those who are headed to Miami, Florida for tonight's card. We have 14 fights, a lot of grizzled veterans competing here. A lot of folks who've paid their dues tenfold. We'll talk about many of these matchups. Seven out of 14 fights tonight are currently lined to end inside the distance. And we'll get things kicked off with the first bout of the evening where we have Marina Moroz taking on Joanne Wood, formerly known as Joanne Calderwood. Joanne Wood, 38 years of age. She's made it known that this will be her retirement fight. You have to wonder, why didn't she walk away after the victory over Luana Carolina? Hmm. Could it be legacy? Could it be a payday, et cetera? Joanne Wood, if this fight standing, if this fight stays standing, she has a legitimate shot here. But Marina Moroz um, is a fighter who is fairly well-rounded. I still have flashbacks from Marina Moroz's matchup against Danielle Taylor. If you want to go back and watch something that will make you pour bleach into your eyes, that is um, that is a fight to to avoid rewatching. In this case, I'll be picking Marina Moroz. Although this is not a fight I'm touching from a betting perspective, I think that there is some volatility here with a fighter who has made it clear this is her last fight, and also she has a propensity to check out of fights in Joanne Wood. So give me Marina Moroz in that matchup. Next up, where we have Asu Amabayev from Kazakhstan taking on a CJ Vergara, who Vergara has missed weight three times at the UFC level. He should be showing the door as far as I'm concerned. There is no reason for him to be in the promotion at this stage in the game. You watch the victory over Danny Lacerda, and he was rocked and walloped all over the octagon, ended up Turning the tide in that matchup, he's taking on a Asu Amabayev who has the victory over Ode Osborne. And you look at the padded record, yes, there is some cause for concern here. And look at the betting line also, minus 560. And Vergara, what does he have to lose? He has nothing to lose here. He probably knows he's getting his pink slip after this fight. And he's going to come out, show his toughness, but is it going to be enough against Amabayev? I don't think so. I, I'll be picking Asu Amabayev here. Well-rounded, um, has a bit of a motor on him. Could he potentially fade late? Yes, but Vergara, I think he's going to be overwhelmed here in this matchup. So give me Asu Amabayev in that matchup. Now, we've got a bunch of comments here. I want to say good morning to Ben. Thank you for chiming in. Professor Chaos, welcome back. It's a great morning to break down some fights. And cheers to everybody who's headed to the arena today. Make sure you get loud in there. Good morning. All right, let's go. Let's continue breaking down these fights. All right, here we go. We've got huh, Rebellus de Spain taking on Josh Parisian. Now, I'll tell you how I feel about Josh Parisian. I actually faded Josh Parisian with Alan Boudot. Um, and that did not go as planned. Boudot was within one or two hammer fists from ending the fight against Parisian. Parisian turned the tide in that matchup. And you look at you look at the metrics here and the age. Believe it or not, Despin is a year older than Josh Parisian. And Parisian came in at 266 pounds. What's going on here? He, Parisian looks like he could fight down at middleweight if he took the strength and conditioning seriously. This is a fighter who relies on outlasting opponents. And oh man, I I see a lot of folks giving some love to Parisian here. I know the Despain side of things, 4-0, quick knockouts. If you are going to play something, I think it would be Despain round one. I don't advise anybody playing to Spain money line at minus 300 or higher than that. But I understand that this is a fight. He should win the Cuban Taekwondo fighter who UFC likely have set up for a victory here. Remember the close proximity from Miami to, to Cuba. So that's just another wrinkle uh, in the handicapping process. Give me to Spain here to win inside the distance and to win early. I think that Parisian, that's the last time we see him competing inside the octagon. 
And I'm surprised his career has lasted this long. Now, this is a very interesting matchup. Michelle Pejera taking on Mikhail Oleksiychuk. Oleksiychuk coming in as the plus 126 underdog. And what what is fascinating about this fight also is you have Oleksiychuk who has fought as high as 205 pounds in the UFC. And he's the fighter who I think should head down to welterweight. I know he's come down to... to middleweight and then on the other side of the fight you have michelle pejera who has been competing down at 170 pounds yes yes went over petrosky and now he's up bulked up at 185 pounds looks solid looks like he's ready to compete here you have to wonder about the energy regulation issues on the pejera side he has a tendency to burn himself out also in the backstage while he's warming up remember a couple of years ago i went posted that video that went viral where he was flying knee after flying knee after flying knee in the warm-up room prior to heading out for the fight and he ended up gassing himself out against tristan Connolly. Uh, that win by tristan Connolly was wild that was a wild wild fight um now is michelle pejera going to be a little bit more reined in this time around i do believe he will be and mikhail oleksaychuk he has the much more crisper striking he's a fighter who does lack a ground game and the physicality side of the fight he that is missing from oleksaychuk remember it wasn't that long ago the uh Chitty and Jaquani matchup where Oleg Jacek had to really fight through some serious adversity to come out the other side victorious. And one thing I'll say about Pereira is he he struggles when he faces adversity. And you look at his professional record. This is a fighter with 11 losses on his record. So it's not like he has some aura of invincibility. And many of these losses have taken place on the regional scene. So interesting fight. I'm leaning the Pejera side. I'll be picking Michelle Pejera, but I don't hate on anybody um, who's who's taking the underdog in Oleg Sechak. I believe that he's one of the more live underdogs in this matchup, especially if this gets out of round one, round two-ish. And the midpoint of round two, if Pejera looks like he's starting to slow down and Oleg Sechak has found his range and his timing, then I would hit Oleg Sechak at the live number, but I'm going to be picking Michelle Pejera here. Now, this is another fight where there's a lot of volatility here. We've got Iwan Kudalaba taking on, on Felipe Linz. Felipe Linz, who's <clears throat> sitting as a, let's see here. I'm going to just double check these odds right now to make sure that we are accurate here. I, I'm leaning towards the Linz side because I don't trust Iwan Kudalaba if this fight ends up getting deep. And Linz is on a three-fight winning streak. It says Iwan Kudalaba minus 145. I actually am leaning towards the underdog here. I realize Felipe Linz fighting out of ATT. By the way, there's a lot of a lot of Floridians um, who are competing on this card. A lot of fighters who train in South Florida. I'm going to be picking Felipe Linz here. You want Kudalaba very dangerous early. We know he is going to come out guns blazing, throw caution to the wind, a bit of a berserker, so to speak. But Felipe Linz, we know he's been cracked also by Tanner Bozer and others. Uh, but there's been a career res resurgence here, resurgency against Maxime Grisham. I'm going to be picking Felipe Linz in this matchup. Now, this is this is a fascinating fight. Kyler Phillips taking on Pedro Munoz. Initially, when I was watching the tape back and looking at the numbers and realizing that Pedro Munoz has a very difficult time corralling and tracking down opponents, that Kyler Phillips would be a solid play. But the more I looked at it, I realized that Kyler Phillips, the way he darts in and darts out constantly darts in and darts out and um his his time away um the usada suspension the win over song yadong very very impressive by kyler phillips um song yadong appeared to be befuddled out there this fight is interesting because you have muñoz a stalwart of the division at 135 pounds you know those low leg kicks are coming and 
Phillips will have to stay evasive here and make the most of the opportunity against a stationary target in Pedro Munoz, who doesn't move his head that well. I do like Munoz in this spot. I'm going to be picking Pedro Munoz, the underdog. I think that he is going to... Um, He's going to survive the early, I don't even want to call it an onslaught, but getting picked apart early. Phillips, MMA lab fighter, you have to also take that into account that he does have Sugar Sean O'Malley fighting out of the same camp. So um, coaching staff and everybody is going to be tuned up and ready for this one. But I, I'm leaning towards the underdog here. You've got the resiliency on Munoz's side. You've got the leg kicks. And as far as who I trust, the deeper the fight goes, if the going gets tough, I trust Munoz. One loss that really still irks me is uh, Munoz has lost to um, Frankie Edgar. Frankie Edgar, I believe, lost that fight to Pedro Munoz. And we'll unfortunately never get to run that one back. <clears throat> Brian, good morning. Do I think that um, Benoit Saint-Denis has a staph infection? Perhaps. Um, but also, if you if you watch the way... Um, the way Benoit Saint Denis competes, I don't think it's going to be a factor in this in this fight, unless Poirier ends up splitting him wide open. Oh, Dustin, welcome aboard. Appreciate you. I watched you get a uh, victory um, on Long Island a few uh, years ago. Excellent job. Excellent job. Let's see. Parisian has too much adipose tissue. Oh, well, um, that is that is a solid point. Um, Marcus, good to see you. Thank you for joining on. Let's continue here uh, because we do have a number of amazing fights to continue to break down here. And let's go to the next one where we, hit, we have Matosh Gamrot, who was feeling himself on the scales. You saw the weigh-ins, the official weigh-ins, and then the ceremonial weigh-ins. He's been very loud, very boisterous. The face-offs, um, getting right in Rafael Dos Anjos' face. And Rafael Dos Anjos, I mentioned earlier today on Twitter that these fighters, there are many grizzled veterans who have paid their dues tenfold. And Rafael Dos Anjos is definitely one of those fighters. And Mateusz Gamrat, he paid his dues even prior to arriving in the, U in the UFC. And he has the win over Rafael, um, or Rafael Fiziev. And Gamrat, we know, um, wins over Jeremy Stevens and others. I uh, He has the win over Hot Sauce also. I believe that was via knockout. I don't trust Gamrot if he's striking, especially at range. I hope, and uh, I'm. I got in on Matouch Gamrot early when he was in the minus two hundreds. I'll preface that by, um, preface my thoughts by saying that. So I played uh, Gamrot in the minus two hundreds, and now this line's blown out to minus four fifty. Do I think there may be value on Rafael dos Anjos? Possibly, Rafael dos Anjos. He looked. He looked bad against Vicente Luque. Vicente Lupe was getting the better of a lot of the, even the grappling, grappling exchanges. And you know the motor on Gamrot. That's one thing that he does have. And the fight against Armin Sarukian, although I thought Sarukian won that fight, Gamrot still showed us what he's made of. And that was inside of a smaller octagon. This one's going to be inside of the big octagon, frothing crowd. We're going to hear the, actually, there should be two awesome walkout themes uh, theme songs. One of them is going to be Rafael Dos Anjos, the blood sport song. And then also when Curtis Blades makes the walk, you'll likely hear the um, Mortal Kombat theme song as well. So just prepare yourselves for that today. Brace yourselves. So give me Matosh Gamrot to win. And do I think he could finish Rafael Dos Anjos? I do think this fight's likely going to a decision. This is one of seven fights that are currently favored to go the distance. And I think that this one does have a high likelihood of that happening. But I also have to preface that by saying there are no certainties in this game. And Rafael Dos, Rafael Dos Anjos has so many miles, so many miles on his body. So give me Gamrot to win. Now, hmm, Macy Barber, Caitlin Chukagan. This is a fight where initially I ran the tape. There are two fights that I've kind of changed my stance on over the course of time. Um, Macy Barber. I got in on Macy Barber at minus 170. I um, thought the physicality is going to be a huge difference maker. Um, and then I started to watch the the lead up to this fight with Chukagi and who's been able to crack the code for her. 
Cynthia Calvillo was unable to do it. There have been so many others who've struggled to close distance on Caitlin Chukagian. You also have to realize that um, you hear the grunting sounds from Caitlin Chukagian. The, the range management and the timing that Macy Barber has is almost non-existent. She has not worked. Perhaps she's been working on it behind the scenes, but it hasn't really helped I haven't seen any progress in that regard. She should be a bull in a China shop here. Can I trust Macy Barber to be a bull in a China shop and to um, come out like a gangbuster and just get in the pocket with Chu Kagan in the larger octagon? That may be that may be a lot to ask at at a even minus one seventy. So I ended up playing uh, Chu Kagan also plus one eighty. So I arbed in that spot um, and. I'm a, am I picking Macy Barber to win? Yes. I think that the, the age factor is significant here. You have 35 year old against a 25 year old, the physicality. If Barber goes to the body, if she gets inside and goes to the body, I think that's her path to victory here. Don't go head hunting against the taller opponent opponent with great footwork in Chukagian who uses her range very well. Chukagian is one of the better fighters one of the better lady fighters who uses her distance well. And Barber struggles with distance management. So hopefully um, Uriah Faber has Barber tuned in to attack the um, attack as far as closing the distance. That should be um, a big, big point of path to victory for Macy Barber. She can't give up on herself either. She struggled with uh, um, Amanda Hebus at times. She struggled with, gosh, there have been so many fighters that Barber has come out the other side barely victorious. So I feel like even to Arb in this spot and, and come out with the small profit is uh, is advantageous. But also, do I trust either fighter? Not necessarily. I could see this being Chukagian's retirement fight. <clears throat> now, let's see. Let's see. Questions will be answered. I agree. I agree. What is your prediction about Dustin's? fight we're gonna get to that we're getting very very close um oh you were you're asking about poirier or stolzfus let's see so let's talk jelton almeida taking on curtis blades curtis blades is coming in as a plus 100 underdog and this is a fighter who's come so close but as close does not count we've seen him brutally brutally knocked out in past fights we've seen him come up short you I have difficulty trusting Curtis Blades to do anything at this point in his career. He does have great wrestling. He's huge for the division. Granted, Jailton Almeida came in at 241 and Curtis Blades at 257. Almeida is really starting to fill into his frame. And you look at the size of these fighters. I know that Almeida has competed down at 185 pounds, but this guy's filled out now. 241. Um, he's a heavyweight now. And both of these stars, 6'4", 6'3", respectively, both with an 80-inch reach. Fight doesn't go the distance, sitting at minus 225. I'm leaning towards the Almeida side. I don't trust Curtis Blades, man. I think that he's really gotten in his own head in many fights. The Sergei Pavlovich fight, what the hell was going on with that one? Why was he trying to... Stand and trade for any length of time against a power puncher. I know over he he has the win over Overeem that was a while ago, and and he has I think it was Daukus where he was winning the stand up exchanges. But why go there if you um, if you have the much better wrestling and ground game? The thing about this fight though is I have a Brazilian jiu jitsu specialist in, um, in Almeida who can land takedowns, and we've seen him land takedowns in many fights. And by the way. You want to talk about there being no certainties in this game. Derek Lewis and Jailton Almeida went a full five rounds. That was something that will. It, it I'm saying this with my chest that there are no certainties in this game. Uh, any MMA handicapper comes out and says this will happen. This will happen. That's making a mistake because um, Derek Lewis, Jailton Almeida, went a full five rounds and we've seen other fights where even Michael Chandler and Justin Gaethje went, um, went the distance. There've been other situations where Thiago Santos 
and Johnny Walker went the distance. There are so many situations where that happens. But in this fight, I think Almeida, he's the, boy, the let me see. He's the younger fighter by a few months. He has a lot less wear and tear on his body, even though he he's 20 and two. I think that this is a a spot where Curtis Blades lays an egg. I know he, he has the ability to take fighters down, but what happens when he's on his back? That's what I want to ask you. Give me a jail to Almeida. And I'm, I'm liking the, I'm starting to like the number here. I haven't played it yet, but I, I think that Almeida is going to walk away victor victorious in this spot. And I understand folks, they want, they want to cash that Curtis Blades ticket. So, so bad. Blades loses via rear naked choke. I could see that. Um, you, JP, you love this spot for Jailton. Let's see. My concern with Blaze's concussions, his KO losses were really nasty, and his chin may be a red flag. I don't think Almeida will KO him unless it's GMP, but I give give me Almeida. I also see that this is only a three-round fight, so this isn't a situation where cardio is going to be on full display. So Almeida is going to be the pick in that spot, but, man, if you want to talk about matchups that have been served on a platter, for Curtis Blades, he hasn't been able to come through. Now, Piotr Jan, Song Yadong. This is a fight where this could be the main event on many, many UFC cards. I really like this fight. Um, from a betting perspective, yes, you are getting some value potentially on Piotr Jan, who's been traditionally lined as a significant betting favorite. But also, we must realize Song Yadong is feeling his oats. He has no... His very brash, he's getting in Piotr Jan's face. You can see the confidence is riding high, coming off of a win over Chris Gutierrez. But Piotr Jan is not Chris Gutierrez, and Piotr Jan spent some time away. Piotr Jan, I believe he's lost four of his last five fights. If I've, yeah, lost four of his last five fights. Granted, some of them were um, title fights. Where's the confidence at for Piotr Jan? Um, the, the Sugar Sean O'Malley fight, I was on Piotr Jan in that spot. I thought he won that fight. And you have to wonder how much wind that has taken out of his sails, especially I expect Song Yadong to come out guns blazing in this matchup in the larger octagon. And Piotr Jan has traditionally spent a round or so gaining intelligence and could potentially lose the first round against Piotr Jan from a... From a, a volume standpoint, where he's gauging distance and getting his timing down, and he can't wait around. He can't let this happen again. Um, his back's against the wall here. I see folks hitting Song Yadong as an underdog. I'm still leaning towards Piotr Jan here. I haven't played him. I think that Piotr Jan is the more talented, more well rounded fighter here. And the other thing is, Tapology, I believe, has the height of Piotr Jan wrong. He seems to me to be about 5'4-ish. He's listed at 5'7". I don't. I think that's off. And when they come into the octagon, I think that Song Yudong is going to have a significant size advantage. And Piotr Jan traditionally has been at a size disadvantage in many of his fights. You look at the uh, the Jose Aldo fight and others, and, and he actually had to work his way back into that fight before brutalizing Jose Aldo, you want to talk about one of the brutal finishes uh, that we've ever seen in the UFC, Piotr Jan's victory over Jose Aldo. So give me give me Piotr Jan here, but this is a very, very, very closely lined fight. And I, I understand why folks are playing Song Yadong. Now, whoa, oh my goodness. This, this is an awesome fight. This is a great matchup. This, this is a stylistic nightmare for Jack Della Maddalena if the fight hits the mat, but also there's a huge discrepancy in skill set when it comes to a chin and also the pinpoint striking accuracy. So that that goes to Jack Della Maddalena. I know Gilbert Burns was able to hold his own and go three rounds against Hamza Chemaev, and that also, that bat, I believe, took place in Florida as well. <clears throat> this, this fight, we're going to have the... Miami crowd pulling for Gilbert Burns. Jack should not be phased by that. Um, I I watched back many, many, many of his fights. He's one of the most uh, beautiful from a striking standpoint, from a boxing standpoint. It's so pretty to watch to watch him fight. But 
what's really ugly is if he gets put on his back. He's been able to work out of different uh, positions off off of his back to survive getting choked out. But I do see Gilbert Burns um, with the clear abilities to lock up a choke against Jack Della Maddalena. But how is he going to get this fight to the mat? Is he going to get caught closing distance? And I do think that that's eventually going to happen. I see Jack um, cracking Gilbert as he tries to close distance. But I, I have to, I have to say that I have to be honest with myself and say that if Jack gets put on his back, he may not be getting up and he may be submitted in this matchup. So this is a volatile matchup fight. Doesn't go the distance is sitting at minus two twenty five. I think it could be a little, it could be lined wider than it currently is. I think that this fight doesn't hit the scorecards. I would shop around for that. Gilbert Burns getting up there in age. Also 37 years of age. And what's an interesting tidbit that um, Rafael Dos Anjos and Gilbert Burns were childhood friends and they grew up together. Isn't that interesting? And they both ended up making it to the UFC and, and look how far they've come in the game. So let's, let's, let's toast to Gilbert Burns and Rafael Dos Anjos. Thank you, my brothers, for all you've done for mixed martial arts. I think that there is the potential for fighters retiring here and it would not shock me to see gilbert burns retire so i'm going to be picking jack della madalena to win um, but i don't like the number the minus 160 number <clears throat> give me a jack inside the distance let's take a look at the uh at the comments here you're on burns minus 120 plus 305 okay interesting he, it's got a Let's see if let's see if it goes if this fight goes long. How does JDM Gilbert compare to Gilbert Wonderboy? Ooh, wow. Yes, that's a great point. The grappling was on full display. The, the issue here is I believe that the more dangerous striker, the fight fighter who can put your lights out, Gamblin Joe, is Jack Della Maddalena. He's got that killer instinct, and he's not afraid to really trade in the pocket at boxing range. Whereas um, wonder boy will stay at kicking range. Gilbert could implement a similar game plan and run the clock. Interesting. Interesting. I think that Jack's going to end up hurting him. Let's see. So we're working our way up the card. Here is another fight where I initially ran the tape and was um, on the Kevin Holland's side, but the more I, the more I listen to the fighter interviews, the more I realize that Michael Page is going to get into some banter inside of the octagon. Both of these fighters are going to be talking to each other. Kevin Holland and Michael Page. Michael Page, if you aren't familiar with him, comes over from Bellator, a kickboxing fighter who's a specialist to the and degree michael page is going to stay at range he doesn't take massive risks he'll try to avoid the ground at all costs against kevin holland who i was on kevin holland against jack della Maddalena. i was on kevin holland against wonder boy thompson it seems like i'm a glutton for punishment here because kevin holland is impossible to trust at this stage in his career i i asked folks on twitter Describe Kevin Holland in one word to this point, um, his UFC career to this point and can't trust him. I, I thought, and I believe that there still may be value on Kevin Holland, but he is another fighter similar to Curtis blades in that you, you have to fight to your strengths to win. Why are you putting yourself in jeopardy and fighting a close fight? The wonder boy Thompson matchup, that should have been his victory. He ends up walking away from Stephen Thompson and letting him up. That happened two times during the fight where he could have wrapped up a submission. There have been other situations inside the octagon where Kevin Holland will play with his food. One bet I ended up hitting that I was proud of was Kevin Holland via submission against Tim Means. But in this spot, man, I think that there are a multitude of outcomes that are live. These two could have a kickboxing match where it's a point fighting uh, situation. And then it goes to the judges scorecards and, Oh my goodness, what have we done? Um, so in my eyes, 
I am going to pick Kevin Holland here, but I don't, I don't trust him. I know he has a much better ground game here, but does he have the wrestling to get the fight to the mat? Can he get hold of Michael page? Does Michael page have octagon jitters? That is a possibility there too. in his UFC debut, I'm going to be picking Kevin Holland, but I don't trust either fighter. I trust Kevin Holland to not be trustworthy. That's we're creatures of habit and, and Oh man. So give me Kevin Holland here. Now, this is the fight that everybody's been talking about. Look at the All right. JP says, you think Gilbert will wrestle JDM? Well, yes, he's got a close distance. He's got to get in tight early. So let's talk Benoit Saint-Denis versus Dustin Poirier. This is a breakdown that I did earlier in the week. And I mentioned that I got in on Benoit Saint-Denis at minus 135 and I've added at numerous price points. Now he's been bet out to a minus 200 betting favorite. And he's taking on a seasoned veteran who's also, um, I know he's from Louisiana, but also does his work at ATT. And he's paid his dues. He's paid the cost to be the boss. Dustin Poirier, Dustin Poirier, that piston like left hand. Both of these fighters, southpaws. Um, the larger fighter, Benoit Saint Denis, with less mileage on him. I know the, Ales the uh, Zaleski Dos Santos fight took big damage there up at 170 pounds, but you watch the, the damage that Dustin Poirier has taken throughout the course of his career is incredible. The Dan Hooker fights, the Gaethje fights, there have been so many of them. If Poirier is able to crack St. Denis as he's closing distance and just unload the clip. I could see Poirier finishing uh, St. Denis, but I think that the far more likely outcome in this spot is that Benoit St. Denis is able to get inside, get his grappling going, and maul Dustin Poirier on the mat and really make this a war of attrition. And Benoit Saint Denis, as we've seen, he has no qualms um, going to war in multitude of facets. Benoit Saint Denis is 28 years old. He, yes, lacks the striking defense. That's pretty clear. There's a huge discrepancy in levels as far as striking goes. Um, but Benoit Saint Denis, I do not want to see him staying at range. I want to see him closing the distance, get the grappling going. Poirier, yes, could potentially be live here. I, I will say that. Um, the cardio side of things, St. Denis, we've seen him pass the test there. I don't think this fight's going the distance. Uh, Benoit St. Denis, I believe, could win this fight via submission. I think that's one of the outcomes that's in play here. I also could see Poirier getting ground and pounded on the mat too. That's, that's a possibility as well. We've seen Poirier. He's coming off of the knockout loss. So there's, there's some issues there. So give me Benoit St. Denis. I like the early number. Now this number has kind of been blown out a little bit. Um, and this fight, you listen to the interviews, but Dustin Poirier, I know he's, he's up for this fight, but he's also reflecting on that. This he's on the back end of his career. And that's pretty clear. He's taking on a young, hungry fighter in Benoit Saint Denis. And when when I when you talk about fighters who you want to back with your money, young, hungry, talented fighters. Yes, he lacks the striking defense, but he may he may get knocked down. He's not going to give up on himself, Benoit Saint Denis. So I, I'm picking him to win. Now, main event of the evening. You want to talk fighters who won't give up on themselves? Um, Marlon Vera, although he's at a huge um, he's, he's against, he's up against eight ball uh, in a few spots here. I was on Sean O'Malley the first time these fought, these two fought. This is a rematch. Sean O'Malley is coming in as the by, minus 255 betting favorite. Now, how does he, how does he get that number done? He wins by winning rounds, winning volume based striking decision where he, Uses a lateral lateral movement on the outside outskirts of the octagon, stays at range, and picks Marlon Vera apart. The challenge here is I already can feel the smirk of Marlon Vera um, as O'Malley and Vera are getting into it. The challenge here for me, if I'm backing O'Malley, is the longer this fight goes, that's when Marlon Vera seems to come alive. I know everybody's looking at the fight against... Um, 
Corey Sanhagen for Marlon Vera, where he wasn't able to accomplish much. He couldn't close the distance. He was content um, staying at range and trying to um, trying to work his way inside. He wasn't successful. O'Malley, he has to be able to chop the legs of Sean O'Malley. He needs to he needs to make this a dog fight. I don't believe O'Malley's going to finish Marlon Vera. No one's been able to do it yet. And if that's the case, then the longer this fight goes, remember how I've said in the past against Dominic Cruz and others that it's only a matter of time until Marlon Vera catches a fighter um, when he comes alive. It takes it takes time. And this could be a situation where it's a live betting opportunity if you're considering the Marlon Vera side because he likely and has in the past lost first and second rounds to fighters. I am picking Marlon Vera here. I understand the winning minutes is going to O'Malley, but the longer this fight goes, if this hits the third round, the fourth round, Marlon Vera is going to turn up. I know he didn't look good on the scales. He looked like he, he struggled, but he did make weight and Thank you, JP. If you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, appreciate it. Let's let's go. We got the Sugar Show, baby. Let's get what's ours. Have a great fight day, Mike. I understand why folks are picking and taking Sean O'Malley here, but I've been around the game long enough to see that one fighter you can't count out is Marlon Vera. And I watched the first fight that took place. It's amazing how videos and clips of that first white fight we don't see much of that um it's almost like was that ai generated when you had marlon vera chopping at the leg of o'malley and that's happened multiple times now where o'malley's legs have given out on him i'm gonna be picking marlon vera to win this fight and i may end up pulling the trigger on a play on marlon vera i haven't done it yet i I'm waiting to see where the line moves because there's a lot of uh, money on O'Malley out there in the world. And a lot of casual fans also picking O'Malley to win. I'm looking to catch a live line on Vera, depending on how he looks early. Yes, that we'll see. But I don't think he's going to be able to get, I don't think O'Malley's going to be able to get Marlon Vera out of there. So, so Cheeto Vera is going to be the pick, but I could see him losing the first round, losing the second round, possibly. If O'Malley uses the footwork, yes, O'Malley, there's a clear path to victory here for Sean O'Malley. If he uses the footwork, stays at range, um, he, if he stays pretty, Sugar at range, picks his spots, could get it done. <clears throat> My brother, who is a fighter that could benefit from a rumored 165-pound division? Oh, man, there are so many of them. I could see Justin Gaethje fighting in that division, but I don't think that fight's... I don't think that division's coming... Uh, anytime soon i gotta be honest i like the i like get the way things are just get rid of the um ladies 145 pound division and 135 pound divisions and we're we're set um let's see let's see so jp says you were gonna take fight goes and you've talked yourself off of it because yes i could see the fight ending inside the distance there so 14 fights thank you for tuning in appreciate everybody on this wonderful fight morning Remember to have a great rest of your day. We're closing this out in under 39 minutes. Cheers to you. Thanks, everybody.